Good morning guys, a good great morning to all of those who tuned into the realest thing coming out of the world. Um, the head of states resetting your life and how to know when to reset your life. Should your life be reset? Um, do you think you're at the high point of your life? Do you think I am at the high point of my life? Do you think if you were in my position, you would stop living and you will just accept that all that you've acquired and you're now wealthy and you should just stop and spend money? Do you think that would uh, make life better for you? So let me tell you. So recently, because of how fast the Pui Group has been growing, um, a lot of shortcomings have been found as it relates to SOPs, Standard Operational Procedures, systems in place. And most successful businesses thrive on systems. Systems, systems, systems. There's no other way. Records of how you do things before Records of all your mistakes, records of everything. Systems, systems, systems. That is the only thing that is gonna get you anywhere. Because you can't remember everything. Everybody's not gonna be with you all the time. So, you gotta put systems in place. Write it down on paper, store it on a computer, store it on a hard drive. How did we deal with this problem when we got it? That when a new person comes, they knew that this is how we deal with this problem. It was good for us, we try it again, and then we deal with the problem with the solution that we had in stores, and it didn't work out as it worked out the last time because there were some shortcomings, because in slow time in delivery or something else, and then you adjust that system. But you had a system in place to respond, to deal with the issue at the time. So. This morning I was woken up by one of my systems in place, mentally, that is stored in my subconscious, is that money is not my true desire. Money is not all for me. Although I act that way, because why checking everything? Why being accountable? You know, why? No, 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 no. If you're going to do something, you do that thing purposefully, right? So it's very important that when you get money, you make a record of that. When you spend money, you make a record of that. Because how would you know when you had money and when you don't have money? So being money conscious is not being money greedy. Being financially conscious is not being greedy. It's being financially conscious and a lot of people get mixed up. Poor people, the poor people mentality looks at the man who has money, does everything that is needed to keep money and the poor man is not willing to do what he's doing. The poor man is not willing to check his money. The poor man is not willing to be prudent with financial matters. He's not willing. He's fucking lazy. He's pathetic. That is what the poor man is. He's pathetic. Because he's not willing to forego that Coca-Cola. He's not willing to forego that soda. He's not willing to take a serious conversation with his girlfriend about the chocolate that she wants. Oh, baby, I want a chocolate. Baby, a chocolate is $1,700. Do you know that we could cook three meals with $1,700? Did you know that, baby? Do you sense it being a little selfish that you alone want a chocolate for $1,700 when that is about half of my salary? Do you know that? Are we gonna have these conversations? Is the man willing to have that conversation with his girlfriend? Maybe we can do it, but this is the circumstances that we are gonna be in if I do do it. Not because you can do something, you do it. Right? Simple. There are sacrifices. Are you willing to make the necessary sacrifices to be a better you? And it's not easy. Like yesterday, I'm seeing videos of me in the gym and it's blowing up and everybody is sharing and it's, it's killing it on the internet. They took out the funny parts. They took out the parts that I'm in pain. But it was not my pain. 
was the funny thing. Is their unwillingness to feel pain is the funny thing. Because they're the fat fucks. They're the lazy, lazy fucks. They're the poor motherfuckers on the streets. Not me. I'm the guy who has seemingly made it, but still in the gym killing it. Still willing to feel the pain, forego the pressures, or go against up all that is there, facing it head on, to be a better me. And I am the joker. See, I can't hear, hey, they're laughing. You can't laugh at fucking me. I've been listed as the latest billionaire in this country. How the fuck you could laugh at me? How do I become the joke? Again, it works to my advantage because it's only how you look at life. I don't care what you talk about me. My concern is that it is me who you're speaking about. I'm hoping that most people are motivated by what I do. But nonetheless, I want to make sure I make the rounds. I want to make sure that I am the conversation of the day. I've made sure that for the last seven years, people come and go. You will start a show, it's big, exciting, and everybody's looking at it, and then they can't sustain themselves. I have come every single day for the last seven years and do a morning program. While working my way up to becoming somebody worthwhile in this country, or living a worthwhile life. Now, what resetting your life means? And should your life need resetting? If you're in a position like me, you've got about four successful businesses, of which are the fastest growing companies in a country. You're part of a country that has the fastest growing, largest GDP in the world. So you're on track. You've got all the links that is necessary to be successful. You know everyone in the country Everyone in the country knows you because people say, don't worry about who you know, it's who know you. Everyone knows the guy needs credit. Right? Everybody wants an opportunity to sit and talk with the guy needs credit for five minutes. You imagine what it means to have thousands of people yearn five minutes of your time. Do you know what that means? Yesterday I was talking to a businessman who had some issues. Need address. Big businessman in this country he said, Critic, this is this is the way. I said, This is the way to get it. This is how to start it out. There's no surreptitious activity to get in this. You're entitled to this. And they were telling me about some jokes when they used to call me a long time and all them things now. And I sit down and think, This is a nice conversation. I'd like to have this conversation all day. I'd love to get after these guys all the time, but I don't have the time. Time is money. How much money can I make in five minutes of my time? That is what you got to do. When you're talking to someone, if you want to become somebody, if you want to develop yourself, how much time are you going to invest in people? How much time are you going to invest in wasting? A lot of times, we're wasting time. Right? What is the importance? Should someone like me need a reset in my life? Well, there needs to be a reset in my life. There needs to be a reset in my business. How? important is something like that to you but let me tell you so first thing something has happened recently in my life with friends close to me that has impacted me as soon as I got the news personal matter but as soon as I got the news it upset me in such a manner that I went off my normal diet. I start eating a whole eating machine. I just start eating the night I eat, the next day I eat. I eat rice two days now. So I'm off course, just two days. You gotta know when you're off course. Then, for quite some time now, the plan was for um, business with uh, TBN and Tapui is to set structures in place that if I, I wanted to start back on my travels around the world, as you guys know, I started a world tour about two years ago and I traveled to different countries constantly. So I wanted to start that back, right? And 
I know I'm ready to do that. How does the business run? I want the business to be efficient. I don't want my growth trajectory with the business to change. I don't want that. Um, my modus operandi changes. I'm reading books. So um, you see, when I'm talking about business, it's a more serious approach. And when I'm doing my thing, the Danish critic, whatever, whatever needs to be done to get the message across to you guys, I, I do it in a different fashion, right? Because people need information, people need to be educated, uh, people need guidance. Very, very important. People need guidance. How do I impart the knowledge that I have attained with you? And how, as I learn, you learn. So in learning from my mistakes, because I've given up myself as the guinea pig, in learning from my mistakes, because what most coaches do, what most motivational speakers do, they learn everything that they can learn. And when they become learned, then they come to you. But we don't got the time. Guyana's growing fast. How are you gonna capitalize on the opportunities? One, yesterday after talking about setting up an internship, um, one youngster called me, said he's doing online business, he's selling phone, he wants to be a part of that internship. Um, one of my business partners called from the States and said, I want to be part of that internship. A businessman from Bad Settlement called and said, yo, I want to follow you, I want you to lead me, I want you to show me and coach me. I'm doing well with my business, but I feel like I'm always in a struggle. And that is the reality. I don't feel pressured. I'm not in a struggle. I woke up this morning. And before last night, I, I, I told Winston yesterday, I said, hey, what I want you to do? I want you to send away all the laborers. Because we got a multiplicity of things going on. And because of the pressures to keep up, you got problems coming from the pressures. Not problems coming from our shortcomings. Not problem coming from our financial situation. Problems coming from the pressures. Right? The pressures in the environment. The vacuums that we're creating. The systems we don't have in place. Because we're a fast growing company. You're a big company. You don't have systems in place. When this comes, they got to call me. Everything they got to depend on me. People don't know how to act alone. Right? So I calculate, I said, these systems need to be put in place. And days I'm telling you, so this is what I want you to do. So then we just start doing this, this, and I said, man, you don't know what's the most important thing. Because he wants to do everything. He wants to be right. I said, no, 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 no. Whatever the five things you got to do, choose the most important one. And the thing that will be most beneficial at this time, and do it. Then you got to relay. So how do you know what is most beneficial at this time? What are the qualities that you possess that would help you to understand what is the most beneficial situation or circumstance for you at this time? Right? All right. I woke up this morning. So I tell Vincent yesterday. I said, shut down the operations for the weekend. Send away all the laborers. Keep the management staff and apply the SOPs to the management staff. Who works with who with what? We have these systems in place. They're not rigid, they're not structured. Have to write it. What are some of your concerns? What are some of the holdbacks? How are you being affected by the fast growth of Tupui? And here was the funny thing. People are watching and they're saying, wow, they grow and they ain't got them systems in place. I tell you, most business don't have those systems in place. And the businesses who have systems in place don't keep upgrading them systems. So the Pui Group is a year old and the fastest growing construction company in there. So yes, we got um, Petty Cash Book. We got, you got to sign in for their money. You got request forms and all them things. But rigid systems that will take us into 2024. Identifying the shortcomings that we had in 2023. Rigid systems that will identify the mistakes we made in 2023. Do you make mistakes? No. The regular businessman out there think he's perfect. Because he bought something for a million dollars, he sold it for two million dollars. Where is that two million dollars three months after? How have you been 
afforded the opportunity or how have you afforded the opportunity for that million dollars to mature god watch it this, this is a smoke this is a smoke thing point but what's the by jesus christ i know i know you know i'll be struggling and i don't think the course, but, uh, police need to get here for the road but you struggles you struggles is real by struggles with his gun is real when I see that the suffering that there's there's struggles man Jesus Christ I had bad days and some have never so bad days look at look at look at show the road yeah so what structures you have in place do your life does your life need resetting do we need a bit of resetting in our life? And how do you know when your life needs resetting? So I want you to look. You listen to my voice and look at the development in this country. Look at where this country is going. Look at where we were just two years ago, just seven years ago. Go back in your life and ask yourself, where are you now? And does your life need a reset? Because economists are talking about the, the global reset. But do you need a reset in your life? Today I'm beginning the, a reset in some of my companies and my life. Because I've been going back on carbs, eating wildly because of what has happened in my life. Because of how I'm affected personally. Right? So back to Tupui in the business. So I tell Winston yesterday, I say here, send off, send off all the laborers and keep from foremen to managers and then we will go through for two days training programs and resetting the processes which we use. What are the mistakes we have? We got some friction between um, we fleet manager and we chief mechanic. It's happened four times. Three times is the charm. Four times we fucking around with the business. We gotta get serious. Very important for one to understand. Right? So Yeah. Larry. So, it's important to understand when your life needs a reset. And that's what I'm doing now. Let me tell you what's going to happen to this. I woke up this morning, I got a call from the security that a laptop was stolen. Somebody come in the yard and walk around and a laptop was stolen from the work site. Right? Uh, now, right away, I am thinking, you know, a laptop was stolen. What more could have been stolen? But I lose in sleep. I call everybody. I call Winston. I ain't getting on to Winston. I wake up Paul and I say, I need everybody to be down at the work site for 7.30. I want to have a discussion with you all. And then our two-day training and rebooting program starts. We'll go right through the weekend and then Monday we'll start afresh with what everybody had learned. So does it make sense to stop a business? Remember we gotta stop the operations. We got roads in Barbies, we got roads in um um Diamond, we got development in Diamond, we got roads in COVID and we're doing, does it make sense to stop a business? Because the regular man is going to think, I'm stopping my progress. I could have been doing this road two days. I could go so much further with this road. But imagine working with a nail sticking in your foot. You're limping. So you can't walk as fast as you would. And if you took that nail out of your foot, 
if you took look after the corn in your hand you could be able to work three four or five times more efficient than you presently work and when you come back you'd make up that time so you gotta do conscious thinking you gotta think if i stop train my staff restructure myself and come back aptly motivated how much more better am i gonna do and if you can't figure that out well your business is fucked right now if you don't know that lots of companies have to stop the auditors come in they do an assessment of what's going on you don't know you might see things going on downstairs in the store or when people close and set a stop for stock taking that stock taking look is reassessing training a number of different things is me going on what are you willing to do with your business don't be running after the money all the time think about the reset not only in your business but in your life i'm doing two resets i'm resetting first so yesterday i went to the gym with sian sian wanted to do a coffee it was no gimmick i went there being fully well aware that i could get a hit to my stomach that could be serious I didn't think it would be fatal and not suicidal. Sian doesn't have that kind of strength. I've been Sian's gym buddy for going out to four months now. He doesn't have that strength, type of strength. He doesn't have that type of strength mentally. He doesn't have that type of strength physically. I know this as a matter of fact. He been fucking wrong and holler, oh, you're dangerous, and use me friend and this and that. Now I said Sian, and I, I thought yesterday when I called him back last night after the whole incident, if you guys would have seen the video, I thought him being genuine, he said, man, as your friend, and I don't want to hurt you. I said, Sian, when you would have cuffed me, and I be going to cuff you, I wasn't thinking, you're my friend. I'm thinking, we come here to do something. I'm thinking, yes, you're my friend, but we come. I didn't think you're my friend, I'm not going to hurt you. I would have put all the fucking strength I had in to hit in Sian. He likely could have died I think he sensed that so when he tell me my is my friend I said I partner I don't make idle threats I don't make stupid jokes yes I, I don't make stupid joke and idle threat I don't dip on gas I fart four years and it's being a time for the sun he called me and me morning program let me play cough the belly all right now when you tell me that I never see nobody coughing nobody belly with a pad so I said we go in natural and everything we do is natural when we do it in the gym I don't do straps and all and think we call it raw how then suddenly we using things for black women right you're there the gym you call it eh? I am yeah 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 I'm waiting for you you come I come now I'm not beating up on Sia what I'm saying when I say I'm doing something I do it has nothing to do with how I feel and that's the problem I got with people when I say tomorrow morning I will do something and because of something that happened in my life I promise you to do something because of something that happened in my life whimsically or fancifully or somebody tell me something I change my mind I don't do things like that I come and I do the best of my best I thought the Shani I said daddy I am um, he the grandmother had some talk about him going with a taxi to collect water and he said he ain't got the strength to fetch a bottle of water and I'm thinking what the fuck a 23 year old has strength to do a 22 year old what you got strength to do you're fucking wasting space for human being you can't fetch a bottle of water daddy me ain't got the strength yes I am like how fucking pathetic can that be like I've never heard at 23 I've been heisting people and, and at the age of 17. How fucking pathetic can a boy be? That's what's going through my mind when he's telling me. Like you're not his strength. What kind of stupidity is that? I am not the kind of dad that, oh, all right, son. And I, no, it's fucking pathetic. 
What would cause you not to have the strength or the ability to fetch? Well, you went in an accident, you broke each other. That's not me fucking problem. I've been talking to you, I've been warning you. Be careful of who you're around. Be careful of the people who you're with. The five most constant people you're around is a measure of who you are. Simple as that. Like when the security called me this morning and tell me, I said we lost the laptop. We have to sit down and discuss now. Explain to the security. I want to know what he was doing. Was he sleeping? What was he doing? I didn't have a care. I'm thinking systems to put in place to sort this out. I didn't have that much of a care with the laptop. What else a laptop? How much money for the laptop? No, 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 no. We got a bigger problem at hand. We got a hugely bigger problem at hand. Right? And then it became a bigger problem than a theft. Here why? Before, just before I come out for the life, Justin called me and said, boss, I moved the laptop since 8 o'clock. Right? So since 8 o'clock in the morning, the laptop was gone and the security didn't know that he called this morning frantic, worried about the laptop. Right? Not knowing that the laptop wasn't last. You imagine I getting worked up because of the security. How the laptop last? Was this a confusion? Make no sense. Come on, man. What to this truck here? Come to the truck, the clock. Nothing? So you just park it up there alone? Okay. Where did man say he last see um laptop from? Show me, show me. No, it's. I left my double. Hey, morning. morning. He's not too hard for basic things at the moment. Oh, I want to talk to the. Um, well, being you know, Vincent tell everyone, eh? He said we could have gone this side here, but this man left them going to do the barge. He tell him I'm going to do the barge. Uh, no, no, we didn't have it this side. All side. Diamond at the back has a closed down. Yeah. No laborers in comment about. Yeah. Just management staff. Right? Alex, Alex, Alex is a main man. Yeah. Where the laptop last from, mate? <laughs> you skin your fucking teeth? Don't worry. Don't worry, we got started out. So he called me this man. And we saying the laptop last from inside here? Yeah. Watch here. So we got, first thing is, this thing, imagine a security coming and saying the laptop last from in here. And this is lockable. So one of the things that we have not put in place, and this will be send home all the laborers, and we got to manage the and we put the structures in place, is because the doors are supposed to be locked. If the doors were locked, the security wouldn't have the insecurity of studying if a laptop, you, you got to come and see a broke door, you got to broke a door for us before you're going. Justin was using the thing. What time do you left like 8, 8 o'clock last night? Nice, well, so Justin was using the laptop, gone with the laptop, cut off the vehicle for me, Justin. And gone with the laptop, and he didn't know what processes are we putting in place when the security come. Well, the security only come on a week now. But this is showing y'all even from my mistakes. So where you got got when you got the security? Obviously, we got a shark coming. Right? Where you got got is a log book with all the things that you have. Because and, and it constantly updates. So if in the course of a night a truck goes out, it's right. You imagine somebody come and pick up a truck on Sunday and then they miss the con and then the, a whole truck missing. So obviously these are things we got put in place, right? This what we discuss. Somebody go and 
I ain't getting into anybody get into Winston. You know where Winston live? Yeah. Huh? Make a spin by your house and see what's going on with him. I ain't getting into the phone. That's worrying. Hello? Yes? No, you got the wrong number. Yeah. So, um, what are some of the structures we put in place? Fuel structures. We got. We have lots of structures in place, just not enough for Tapui's growth in 2024. Um, all the machines come back from... Clark, I see all your machines come back from the road, covered in on it. That's for walking here. You got, what, what are you in this truck, a load of sand? This is the one with the fuel problem there? Alright, so load up the sand in there. It's three loads of sand to the two load of loam. We load up the sand in there. You bring out the big excavator, we can do a mix up. Yeah. We got the loom pile. As soon as this place dry, we can do the loom in and we finish up there. So Alex and y'all with the drain thing and Saturday, we're gonna do the, the two wheels change for the yeah. thing, yeah. salad. Yeah, I get it for um, 48,000. Yeah. Call the boss when I get it. But by the time I call you, but he was in Barbados. And then you go and forget to call you and tell you back, but we say 14,000 dollars Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roger. I forget to tell you the man I'm going to get this one. Because it's 55 for one. Yeah. Right? And then taking check and hacking. The bassman left, the bassman left. That's why I don't want to business. Good meal, Michelin. Huh? Good meal, Yeah. Michelin. Well, I want to buy a couple more change out. And plus, as I tell you, the rims that we got left, there's two rims you got moved in. Yeah. And four in Barbies are six. I want to put them brand new tires and shoes for me. All those nice used ones, brand new tires and shoes. So, yeah, guys, telling you. So, fuel. We had a problem yesterday where we had a little bit of contaminated fuel. Now, the most, the biggest fuel operation, one of the biggest fuel operations is, is like Rubis and so. Esso gas station had such a big blunder recently. They put gas in diesel tanks. You know, Brother Clark? You know where SO they put in gas in diesel tanks? SO, SO! SO? Yeah, gas in diesel tanks. So, I, I'm talking about the, the structure we got put in place for the fuel. But, when people think, people think like, we ship it. But here now, fuel is just a part of we business. Want to SO, their business is fuel. How you could end up with gas in diesel tank? Now, bear in mind, you got to take a big tanker pour it in something and then start selling it to people you understand? so no matter how much systems you got in place if they're not rigid constantly looked at you don't get a problem so this white thing i don't see me wall falling apart when i accept me falls we had a problem one of the trucks yesterday start um by paul start the problem and cut off because the fuel was contaminated right where the bike? Call the bike there. Watch, the driver was driving off the road yesterday. Hey, Clark, the driver was driving off the road yesterday. Stop watching the fucking thing. Up. You are here with blood clot. That man was driving off the road yesterday. Is that you driving off the road yesterday? Who drive off the road? No, but listen to me. At the end of the road, you drive off there. You gotta look here why. Me pick up was two times higher than the truck there. Don't go there sometimes. You understand? Know you gotta look before you make a move. Yeah. So Alec, here what happened now. Since you're giving me the explanation, and I want you to learn something. Alec, if you're the going truck track where you could have dead. And then you go through one where you ain't get a pass. You just go back to the one where you nearly did. Well, you gotta look for the third option. You understand? So there's no explanation. Because we end up still in the back. One black, we couldn't go, we ain't got no problem. Right? And then the other one we go back to and end up in a problem. If it can't work, it can't work. Just something for learn. Yeah. Right? So yesterday I got a picture with he truck stick up. And here nothing can happen in this country 
without people sending to me and I know him. Right? Let me show you. This is where you get. Jesus, the man got some video. Four banner with one girl and all kind of things. One by. I don't know how. I don't know how. So what's the photo that was sent to me yesterday? Me truck come off the road and there stick up. Right? So right away, me call. I said, check the bottom of the thing. Did the damage any drive shaft or anything? Right away. But you got to talk to him because he's saying, boss, well, the road is black, but I had to go back. There are three and four options through the same area there. Forget into the back of the man. If a snake nearly bites you down there, and you go wrong, you can come back and say, well, here, 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 um, we set up new offices at Diamond and, and why are we discussing systems and things? Where, who is going to be? Who is going to do what? Right? This is the thing we discussed. And as I tell y'all, we had an issue with fuel. Recently we had an issue with fuel. Yesterday I called him and said, here, shut down all the machines because a truck don't break down. An engine for a truck is a million dollars. Some engines for some of my equipment is five and ten million dollars. Brand new excavators as I shut down all the machines. Check all the fuel. Any fuel that is contaminated, drain all of them. Other people said, Ma, will you walk and see what can happen? No, 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 no. Where's Chris? Chris didn't come out yet. No. Yeah, go by Winston. Go by Winston and see what's going on here. Make a spin by Winston. It's unlike he for not answering the phone and all them things now. And get you out here now. Oh, oh, the phone ringing, the phone ringing, the phone ringing. Now we answer him, see, no wake up and fresh in and so. All right. Your tanti Lee no come out here ASAP. So, Again, right? We're setting up with different offices. This here says a site office to go to Bellevue because each uh, site has to have an office. So we, they're cleaning up this and preparing it to go to Bellevue. This, like that. Um, this here so is, oh shit, at least it's just my okay. So this here so is, and, and not to say, watch, we document everything, right? So it looks like we got, Thing, but we got is just that more structures need. You see bills and all everything is documented. Receipts. You got where we um um cash out your book there. Right in here. Show me. What this is though? That is a log book. So we got log books, you got you see we're going any, you got a cash voucher book, you, you got cash vouchers and all them thing now. Constantly you have to have records of everything. What we've had a short coming with it to Pui is timely updates of those records. I want in 2024, I must be able to go to my phone and know what is being bought, when it is being bought, because we got time. Um, who are we using? Peach Tree? Where's the software we're using? Um, hey, Chris, what's going on? All right. So, hey, what's going on? You all right? What happened yesterday? You want the transmission? Oh, shit. Yes, it's a pretty good job. Yes, it's a little bit. I'm going to bring a paint patch for you. Okay. I got patches as used. You just sit and put it on there. Uh, and it's light a cane inside of it. Yes, transmission. Right? You okay today though? You want, you want to rest one more day? Yeah. You want to rest today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Oh. No, you're not. Where, where am I? Where are you? Where's Victor there? Victor, ask Giselle if you want to rest today, Moto. Or if you want to rest, you do light work today. You take it light. Man, Giselle fucking limping. Watch, tell him, tell him take one more there. Giselle limping, buddy. No, no, no. I know I understand, but here you know, take what, leave take what, Modiris. 
Tell you come out tomorrow. Okay. Right? Take a day rest. You can't limp and walk. All right. right? Take a day rest. Yeah. So, stores. I want to be able to come into the stores, access a computer immediately, and know, you know, what I got. In life, I got a lab book. No. I want to move up to computerize and be able to have everything at my fingertips. If I could know things in lifetime, I could make decisions in lifetime. And that's important for me. Because somebody said, but I said, I want to buy this. Why? Every time I ask her, she's something she can and she's willing, but she can't remember like me out of here. So how you get in this? How do you know? How does Alicia know that she needs this thing? How she knows it's not in the stores? How I know this filter is what filter? How I know all these things is what? Every time they need something, who is the person that remembers everything? The mechanic must be able to access and say, when he said, let's say they give me a list of things what I want. Right? The mechanic must be able to access these things and say, here, we have this. Alicia must say, no, you got it. It is in the stores. You understand? That is what I want for myself for 2020. That's going to help me with my, my growth. Um, Alicia, open up here for me now. Who got the key to this container? Collect the key for this container and open it up. So we're still doing development in the yard, as you see. The yard is a little swampy. And so now we're clearing down um, lots of land and we're setting up things. Ah, like this is the compressor, right? And again, Structures are very important. So normally you got people right pop a hose and I got welders, we got the time. I make sure I make something that the hose goes on solid and rigid to it's solid when you put it on there. So hold on wear and tear. Nobody don't run over the hose. This don't the sand and drop down and fall along and damage up. And then I don't import extra cars. Another thing here. So I got container again. More compressor, more equipment, all the generators, everything packed. Once you organize yourself in a certain manner, you can't go around. You know what you have, where you have, and then you don't want to lose. Now, maintenance of something is not only having it or servicing it, it's taking care of it. So, when you got a generator in a place that is not being weathered in getting hit by the weather, it lasts longer. So hoses don't dry rot as a result of sun beating up on it and then leak fuel and then lead on to other problems. You try to negate as much problems as possible. And in our working environment, because of the kind of jobs we go after because of the size of our company, safety, like Justin, the guy I was talking to, is an on-site 24 7 safety officer. But his work day is an eight hour work day. But the young aspiring banner, and I tell them the other day, I said, anybody who could, tomorrow, take care. I'm going to watch. I'm going to call you later. I'm going to bring a patch for you when I come down to town for lunch. I'm going to bring a patch for you. Okay. Right? You can't let a man limp in stuff when I walk inside banner. I'm glad for you today. We got enough mechanical things to do today. You understand? But, Outside of being a good human being, right? Like, I ain't fucking coming limping here today. Outside of being a good human being, if you are a genuine leader, like, how much I could get out of Giselle today? He battered me, but he ain't walking. And this is a mechanic that gotta move engine and loose up this and loose up. How efficient do you think he would be today? And this is where only recently I put Giselle on a, on a monthly salary. And he was asking one day, asking to come out Sunday. And he said, boss, you know, who's the day? I said, well, what happened? When you get the AP. And we put people up on monthly salary specifically because when you get the AP, if you don't come a day, right? Except like for six days, like if you don't come a day, is you off. Giselle will still get his salary. Take rest. Catch up yourself. Because I want efficiency. I want a well-oiled machine. It's like you're opening and closing a fucking door and you're like, and you ain't taking a little aisle and put it inside. 
once you start accepting shortcomings and shortcomings and shortcomings you're going to fail the acceptance of shortcomings is one of the greatest recipes for failure you need to excel every day at what you do not at what other people do just do better for yourself every day you imagine you make 365 better steps for a year where you would be in a year right so are these stores so this is cables if it's always do we think i'll be cables right are the hydraulic hoses and everything set up that is stretch out you understand everything i like this is the thing that was make pile this is a pipe bender most people got a man bending we don't we got a machine that's do pipe bending i got a machine that's cut steel right and all of this is for efficiency. I got my own drill press. I got enough equipment for set up my own workshop. This I ain't like. They put a tire, throw a tire up on top of a generator. No, tire got a plaque for the ground. Tire can't get injury. Tire got flexibility. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Prince. Uh, this is the guy who sent you the. Yeah, I sent it after them. I get no reply from them as yet. But I will follow up. Yes, no problem. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Right? Material. This is this is um geotextile. Right? For for in road. Yes, but if you leave it out in the sun, we're gonna have mega damage. You're gonna store things. So we make sure we got containers for do everything. Right? So if you come out here, cables. For heising things all of this is cables for heising things when you're going to use it you got to check the certification make sure it's okay now in setting up we set up a master point in a clear open area right that's the master point if there's a fire in the place and so where do you go to this is for staffing right even on an ordinary work site where there's mostly laborers even on an ordinary work site, we make sure the staff are there. There's a kitchen. You understand? Anybody got access to kitchen? Food is an important thing. It plays an integral role in life. We did building up shed with waiting area, um, area for lunch area and all them things. Right? But all is in the process of setting up and development. So today, I said I would have shared this with you guys because you're going to know, no matter how big you are in life, you might need a reset. Your life might need a reset. Do you see the need for a reset in your life? Because you, you'd watch a man like me, you would think like, I don't make no mistakes. They ain't got no problem in me life. No, you too might need a reset. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Craig. Um, What's I, I start from a high like point. If you can take long, long for fucking talk, you gonna change me move back now. Talk to me. No, no, but I start with a high point in my day. When you got me, Mr. Critic, like my fucking grandfather, drive up at part and impart something with me. I ain't in the mood for the talk to me. Tell me where you got to tell me. Uh -huh. I can highlight it right away. I'll talk to the minister about it and we get some cleaning and, and, and thing done about it. Right. All right, all right, all right. It was scunt, man. This is the next thing. Who to have around you? Some people could be dancing to your spirit. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, mother scunt. You're giving birth? When you're going to push out this fucking baby? Yeah, it sounds fucking annoying. When you start your day, make sure the people them who are around you sharing the same energy with you. You understand? Don't get lackadaisical people around you. Make sure the people them sharing the same energy with you. That could be daunting. I come in like when I see Giselle limping and I can't even take the next day rest. Me dealing with it today. In addition to being a good leader, seeing him as a brother because he's work hard. Giselle is one of the best mechanics. You understand? Anything you call Giselle, night, day, anything you walk in. 
in addition to that and being a good leader you gotta be a responsible person how does does having weak people around you help you it doesn't help you you understand this is something you could learn and ask yourself the question do you need a reset in your life the critic is presently going through a personal transformational reset short term because i depend goal people would assume that me need to make no adjustments in my life but i do need to make adjustments in my life recently i've been affected as a result of personal things in my life people close to me affect me emotionally in a certain manner i start eating shit and all kind of things that's why yesterday i hit back the gym so hard what sacrifices are you willing to make and i can tell you nothing is easy i didn't want to come out here this morning and have serious conversations with all my staff. What we gonna do? Some people might, yeah, my dad get rid of some people. When I start putting things in place and people don't like the things that are in place, I might lose people that I like. But nonetheless, the serious conversation has to happen. Keep it real. Peace out.